morning everyone welcome to my channel space remote sensing and gis and today we are going to show you a technique how uh, the spatial analysis we can do over the vector data as well as how uh, we can do the same process using the model building technique okay so why the <laughs> model building is uh, uh, good and make your work in a automations okay then the sp uh, spatial analysis workflow you will going to get a good idea in this demonstration so let's start uh, without wasting much time so for this i'm just going to show you over this particular data sets as you've seen this map this is uh, uh, actually a map of <coughs> a parcel of uh, lahar zone of the mount rainer lahar zone uh, which is a depict area of debris that actually flow down to the slope of the volcano as you've seen here okay and uh, it is actually typically enter in the river valley okay so the lahar zone layer that had a three different case scenarios as you've seen here due to this lava flow there is uh, the affected area okay so they are actually we are actually created a three different zones okay so uh, and we have a three more layers like substations layers is there and the power plants layers is there okay so i want to see how many uh, substations and power plant okay are actually affected by this particular uh, flood okay as well as i just want to see in terms of um, uh, you can say the megawatt okay how much megawatt electricity is actually affected uh, due to uh, this particular incident okay so that i just want to calculate first okay so in terms of megawatt okay so for the each scenario wise that i want to calculate okay so let's see let's see how we're going to do that so very first things whenever we are going to start any any kind of project like this which i am going to show you here the best practice is you always go and save a environment okay so how to go and save a environment so if you see here we have uh, uh, options in the view sorry not in view in analysis we have options called environment so environment is something uh, which you can fix uh, over here okay like uh, some fixed things uh, as i am going to show you now like uh, the current workspace is actually which is selected as a model gdb okay and the scratch workspace suppose i just want to uh, select where this is actually there so i can select suppose uh, uh, that particular locations over there okay so i will going to save exactly in that particular locations so for this i am just going to save this particular uh, uh, data scratch workspace in uh, analysis results okay so there i just on mount right now. okay so that is always going to save so that means my all the current analysis or results will going to save in the model gdb and the scratch data sets will go <coughs> and save in a mount right now gdb okay so that is the i can fix uh, for my work so scratch workspace as i told you like uh, here uh, the tools which is on our as a scratch workspace which is use a specific location that default workspace for the output data says the scratch workspace is intent for the output data you do not want to maintain okay so if you want to maintain the data sets that is my this one the correct workspace okay now the next thing which i going to do it that i am going to uh, select the coordinate systems okay so presently whatever this is the current map coordinate systems i just want to uh, preserve that so i can go for it or else uh, i can preserve <coughs> the uh, any of this uh, things which i want to fix but in this case i am going to fix the lahar zone what is my map present uh, the coordinate systems will be there which was in a nad so that i will just going to fix it okay now the processing extent so whatever the map uh, i will going to do any kind of geo processing techniques okay so that will going to apply over a certain uh, extent so that i can fix okay so here we have the layer suppose this is the parcel boundary i i just want to see uh, all my layers will going to fix over the parcel boundary i am then selecting it okay and then you see uh, that is now fixed so uh, like this way you can many things you can fix here you can see here uh, a lot of options will be there which you want and required to fix so those are those all things you can fix it over here okay so now i just simply click on okay so now when, once i click on okay so now uh, my environment is ready to start my project my first work is 
I'm going to calculate a buffer of this particular flooded area. So there's a common analysis operations, which is known as a buffering. We know all about it. The features uh, by distance, which is creating the zone. So uh, we can use these zones in our analysis to locate the features that are fall within them. So we have to determine that we will focus on our analysis in the Lahar zone and the area within 1000 feet okay, of this particular, particular Okay, so how are we going to do that? So we can use a simple tool like I can come to the analysis, select the toolbox and I can simply type it here, uh, suppose buffer, buffer, okay, so simply click on the buffer. So let's select the input data, my input data will first is, uh, you see, uh, this is the Lahar zone, so I'm just going to select this Lahar zone. So my large zone name, what is the buffer uh, three? So that will be fine for me. Okay, so I'm just uh, going to save these data sets over there. So let's uh, start and process it and so that see this. And uh, one more thing, uh, or I can save it in uh, the scratch workspace also, but anyway, I'm not going to say that, but distance I'm going to give here a thousand feet. Okay, so Local unit is fine. Change this as a US fit. Okay. And then simply click on the run. So now once you click on the run, so you will get uh, this Lahar zone areas. Okay. So if you see here, now uh, this is the Lahar areas and all this particular uh, things are actually visible. Okay. So this three different buffer is actually created. So now uh, the next steps is uh, if I want to uh, if I want to see how many power plants and substations are fall inside this particular buffer area. So then I'm going to use one more tool, which is known as a clip tool. Okay. So CLP, I will going to use the clip tool. Okay. First, I will going to extract the substations. So I will going to select the substations, clip features using this uh, large zone buffer three. I'm going to clip it. So I'm just going to give a proper name so that I can understand this. This is a <coughs> Lahar buffer, sorry. This is basically my substations uh, within 1000 feet. Okay, substation, I just change it in 1000 feet. Okay, so that's what I give the name of this output. Okay, fine, so simply click on run. So now you see if I switch off this one, so only those substations is extracted, which is come under the flooding. Okay. So that is <clears throat> what I clip up. Of. Okay. Now the next thing which I'll do the same for this my power plants. So I will go back, I will click the clip. Okay, I will go to use this as my substations or no sorry power plants. So clip feature, I'm going to use the clip feature using the same the buffer zone. And I will give the name as power plant within 1000 feet. Okay, so that's what I give in here and simply click on run. So now once I will did the run, now you see the power plants are also extracted. But the thing is, if I go in attribute, okay, so there is no information about my Lahar zones, okay. What I want, I not only want to extract these substations and power plants, which is within 1000 feet, okay. I also want the informations in which Lahar zone, what the power point and substations are falling. Means scenario one or scenario two or scenario three. So that information is somehow missing over here when we are using this clip tool. Okay, so when you are using the clip tool, this information will not come and include over here then what is the solution? So then there is uh, one more tool is there which help me to do this task. Okay, so what are those tools? So those tools name as the intersect. We can use the intersect tool to perform this task. Okay, so for this case, suppose I am going to take now substation only. Okay, for the understanding. So I'm going to use a new tool which is called as an intersect. So here. Okay, so see here, this is the intersect tool. Now, 
I want to intersect which layer with this. So in this case, I am just going to select the substation layer D, substation WA that I just want to select the first layer and the second input layer will be my lahar zone. This lahar zone only, not the large zone buffer, simply the lahar zone I am going to configure for this analysis because the, in the lahar zone only we have the case 1, case 2, case 2 scenario, not in the buffer zone. So, so that is the reason I am going to use the lahar zone. Okay, so now I once I will give that, I can simply click on run. Okay, so I give a name uh, like substations, um, uh, WA intersects, so, or you can give them name, uh, any, any what, whatever you want. Okay, so it is fine. Substation WA intersects is fine. So I'm just simply click on this. And now you see, if I switch off, same substation layer will come out. And now you see, the scenario field is also added to my target information. That is the power of intersect, which was missing in the clip too. Okay, so each case scenarios, okay, for each substation locations, okay, the case scenario is also added to my program. Okay, now the question is, if I already extract, so this is just I showed you if you do the steps before. Okay, but suppose I already extracted this information, which is substations within 1000 feet, buffer. So, and I want that information should, should add with this. The, using the buffer, whatever I just uh, extracted, and I want to extract this. So, in that case, I'm, I'm going to use that um, uh, the special join. So, when we want to determine the lahar zone, for each substation is in and we can append the lahar zone attribute to the each substations using the special join. So the special join is actually combine your attributes based on the special relationships. For example, if it is a substations is within the lahar zone case scenario too. So it will have the value append to it. So we will append the lahar zone scenario to the substation. Okay, so how we'll do that? <coughs> See, I'm going to use another tool which is called as a special join. Join. So the target features, the target features will be my substations within 1000 feet. My join features is my lahar zone. Okay, so because with the lahar zone, the substations, this information is also added. So the scenario field will going to add with my thousand feet lahar zone. That is the advantage will come. Now, <clears throat> once I will give that, so this match operations will be intersects. Okay, so you can give uh, some name like substations uh, uh, WA uh, within uh, or substation WA special joint. Just I will give like that. So simply I will just run it. So now you see I got my final results with this where the case scenario is also there. The scenario field which was added to the special join which is contained the case number of the case number for the lahar zones. The value which is added based on the special relationships between the substations and the lahar zone the records having some value as known as a null also there okay so this null value which is represent the substations that were extracted using the thousand feet buffer but not spatially related to the original lahar zone okay so if you wanted you you could uh, now symbolize the query and analyze the substations based on the large zone value. Just like this, suppose I just want to summarize this information in terms of total okay, frequency, case scenario wise, how many substations are falling, as well as the total megawatts for each scenario is affected. That I want to calculate. So how will do that? Simply click on the scenario field. Okay, just right click on this, go to the summarize tool. Here, I just need to select what is my target information that is megawatt. Okay, so I just need to select this megawatt. I want the total value that is a sum. Okay, 
the scenario wise the case scenario wise i want to extract okay so that is my scenario field only i don't want to add any more things okay because now if i click on okay a new table with added over here if you just see substation wa so click on open and see this is the results which is showing you the table which is contain the number of substations located within the each case scenario the frequency field is the default count fields okay that is actually summarize the tool which is produced and the sum megawatt field which is include the total megawatt of the substations within the each case scenario and the null results indicate the substations that are not within the lahar flow zones so that is what we did it here using the spatial analysis now i will show you the simple technique okay the same process over the model building so if i want to do the model building okay so suppose we have the model builder okay i have the same maps okay so i will open with the same maps so that you can understand this process okay so if you see here we have the country okay so uh, we have uh, the lahar zone and we have the parcel maps okay the same process i am just going to extract this over here okay so using the model building techniques also you can do so in the next class okay in the next class part of video i will show you these techniques how you can do using the model builder okay so this time i will going to estimate the total value also so as this video is much bigger so that's why i'm just make it a second part of the next week where i will going to show you the model building techniques how you can do the same task using the model building little bit we will change it and we will calculate in terms of dollar how much it is affected okay so so we will see you with the next video thank you so if you like my video uh, video so please give your likes share this video with the others okay and uh, uh, please give your comments okay thank you thank you very much all